Should I go for bigger drives or should I go for bigger NAS? If that's the question, then watch this video. Because there could be a two situations. Either you have an existing NAS, like 2-bay for example, or maybe 4-bay. And um, those disks are filled up, you, have, you run out of space and you need to figure out how to gain some more storage space. So the options are there to either upgrade those disks inside with bigger ones or you go for a bigger NAS like 4-bay or 8-bay. There are two options. So we're going to uh, go through all the options, uh, what, what you could do because either you have existing NAS or maybe you're going to buy your first NAS and you don't want to make a mistake by getting a 2-bay. You want to decide between 2-bay or 4-bay in the first place. So we're going to go through the slides and um, try to understand what the advantages are of um, having more bays and what the advantages are having uh, fewer bays. So let's focus on uh, going for bigger drives first. So if you want to go for bigger drives and your existing NAS is probably going to be cheaper because um, all you need to invest in is uh, your media, bigger drives. So that would uh, cost you less than uh, getting a new NAS because new NAS will definitely get uh, cost you slightly more. Um, even though in the future, well, in the regards future proofing, it might be actually cheaper to have more bays. The second thing is power consumption. Um, running two drives and one motherboard and one, C one CPU will cost you less uh, in the long run compared to having a NAS which is a 4-bay or 8-bay where you need to run all of the drives inside, you need to run bigger CPU and um, other things like maybe even, even cards and, and, and things like that. So that's the power consumption, that's the other thing. And uh, another thing is mirroring. Maybe for data safety reasons you want uh, mirroring instead of striping well instead of having a raid 5 for example because mirror two drive mirror means that um everything what is on the drive one is going to be mirrored on drive two so whenever one or another drive fails you don't need to think much about recovering it's very easy to recover um raid which is mirror <laughs> because you'll find the same data on, the, on both drives with raid 5 recovering is slightly more difficult so you you, you may need to uh, get the software which can actually read off the RAID 5, which means reading from three drives uh, straight away or four drives. And the last thing, why would you choose um, upgrading drives instead of NAS would be noise. Because bigger drives, uh, bigger NASes, as you see, got two fans, so it's going to generate more noise and also more drives. Every drive generates around um, <laughs> certain amount of um, um, noise. So when you add up one to another, all of them they come together and generate like a significant noise, and not just noise, also vibrations. Um, so these are the things why you would probably want to stick with um, upgrading drives only instead of NAS. But uh, let's talk about upgrading NAS uh, with slightly more bays. So the first thing is that. Um, you will reduce the costs per terabyte because if you add um, more drives it will cost you less because two for example this ex uh, example is two times eight terabyte drives each of them would cost 200 pounds um, which brings total cost of 400 pounds which is 50 pounds per terabyte if you go for three drives so if you go for four bay and put only three drives in there so this is a RAID 5 or SHR1 uh, that will cost you £37. That's a significant um, discount already. <laughs> it's cheaper. So you have saved £100 and having the same uh, st storage capacity. Of course, you need to add um, NAS cost as well because bigger NAS will cost you probably £100 more or maybe more. Um, and, the, and the third thing is if you add four drives, you can see that uh, price has reduced already down to £35 per terabyte. Um, that's the first thing, price per terabyte. Second thing, you may actually want to have certain RAID levels. So um, you instead of having RAID 1, you want to have RAID 10, which means that um, you have two RAID 1s. So you're mirroring first two drives with second two drives. So you still have sort of RAID 1 option, but um, you gain speeds massively because that's what video editors will always go for, RAID 10. 
Mm, they got redundancy and they got speed. Two things uh, all together. Um, I, and you can, as you can see in the table down underneath, that uh, you get different speeds from different raids. So raid six will be also slower than raid five. So you may go for raid five, uh, raid ten, or raid even fifty. And, and it, as as more base you get, more drives you get. So this could be an option. Uh, also snow jump, but raiding raid one times three means that you may want to have not only two copies but you want to have three copies. Snowgy allows you to have RAID 1 across three drives if you want to, or four, so it means mirroring every drive. <laughs> so you have capacity of one drive, but you have these copies. Uh, not as a RAID, you have actual, like mirrored copies on NAS. That's why people might want to have this if they're running some sort of um, a company which is uh, with sensitive data, like lawyers, uh, medical records and, th and things like that. You want safety. You never want to lose your data. Of course, you better better to do backups and stuff like that. But one of the, uh, one of the things to consider. Next thing, um, they may want to reuse old NAS for backing up. So if you get a new NAS, you can uh, use your old NAS somewhere in the basement, somewhere in your uh, relative houses, somewhere remotely, and you can set up automated. Um, synchronization sort of task which means that all data will be synchronized to this remote location so you're protected against like fire flood someone burglar burglars breaking into the house taking stuff um th that's the thing backup uh, another thing would be high availability it means if you get two nases two plus series nases next to each other it means that you can set the situation that if one nas just breaks down power supply, power, whatever cable, to both drives, the other NAS will take over instantly. <laughs> not, maybe not instantly, 30 seconds, but it will take over and um, users can still connect and uh, push their data forwards and backwards and keep on using the NAS, even though the main NAS just died. So that, that could be an option. Um, next thing, separate RAID or volume. Because with a 2 bay. You can have RAID 1 or RAID 0 um, or single disks uh, option. But if you want to have, for example, two separate RAIDs, like if you have a 4 bay, you can, have, you can have RAID 5 on three drives and one is a single drive or two RAID 1s. Why would you do that? That means that you can dedicate one RAID for, let's say, surveillance, because surveillance is going to all then be writing some sort of data on, on disks and keeping them busy so other people trying to put some data on those same disks might not get the same performance as, um, as as they should. So if you separate those disks into two RAIDs you know, or even two LANs, um, these two sort of um, departments can have uninterrupted service. Um, that's that's the way of doing things. Next thing, bigger NAS uh, for caching, because not always you're going to fill all of the bays. So if you can, for example, say let's put two, two disks, uh, two bays filled with disks, and you can use SSDs in other two or just one SSD. And therefore, if you don't have M.2 caching slot or PCIe slot for um, SSD caching upgrades, you can use 3.5 inch bays for caching. Put in 2.5 inch uh, SSDs, enable cache. That's it sorted. Mm, moving on. Uh, hot spares. Uh, you may want to use one of the bays for um, hot spare. It means that if one of the drives fail, if you have, for example, RAID 5 and um, and you don't want to have RAID 6, you want RAID 5, you keep one drive uh, spare and un unallocated. It's like separate disk just waiting for one of these three disks to fail. So one of those disks, when they fail, that disks, uh, disk automatically takes the place it's rebuilding a RAID automatically in the background and you keep on going. Um, that, that could be the reason why would you do that. Um, empty bays for future proofing. For example, you, you, you need something like maybe 10 terabytes of data, 8 terabytes of data as today, but you know that in the future your data needs will grow up to 20 or 40 terabytes. So to not waste your um, money on electricity, <laughs> you can start with just fewer drives get then or maximum you can get from those bays and then add more drives as you go later on. 
if, especially if you got Synology, you can even mix different capacity drives. You started with uh, four terabyte drives, you can add some uh, eight terabyte drives, and 16 terabyte drives as, as you go. And that, that's the way of um, avoiding to, to, to a need for expansion unit because lots of people don't trust expansion units because there's a cable involved and extra power supply and extra things and they rather have a bigger NAS and uh, add drives as, as they go. And um, another thing is speed and IOPS. More drives you get, more um, more IOPS you will get because instead of writing to one or two disks at the same time, you can write at four disks, six, eight disks at a time, or read from eight disks at the same time. So that increases the how quickly you can get response from the NAS. And not just um, the IOPS, how quickly you can also how fast you can transfer these uh, data forwards and backwards as well. That's that's another thing. And um, one more thing is um, better hardware. Because usually when you go for a bigger NASes, you'll get better um, CPUs, which means um, more cores, um, better support for um, a, a RAID, uh, configuration PCIe upgrade cards. You also will get uh, often support for NVMe. Bigger, bigger boxes will have NVMe slot as an M2 or through PCIe. The PCIe lanes themselves, even when you've got M2 cache, you will see a difference between um, for example, 720, which is two bay NAS, which could have also NVMe slot, but this NVMe slot will be, for example, X2, which means 500 megabytes a second, whereas um, 1821 or 1621 will have NVMe slot as well, which is times four, much faster already um, connection. So you'll get faster cache in, in, if it's a bigger NAS. Um, and of course, you'll put the cards in like 10 gigabit, 25 gigabit, <laughs> or even faster cards. So these are the things you can do. And this is a um, summary of all things we were just talking about. Uh, if you want to recall all of these things. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If you got questions, as always, go to NASCompares, fill the form, send an email to info NASCompares. We will shoot video like this and help others too. Cheerio.